Hmm, it's a bit cut off at the bottom. Control minus. Hmm. Um, maybe I can set my screen better. Um, so, yeah, this is for the noobs out there, I guess. Um, what, what's, what resolution is the screen? Does anyone know? 5,024 by 1,024. Uh, that's, no, uh, that's a bit small. Yeah, it's it's Computers, computers, man. Sometimes I wish I could just run free in the forest. You know what I mean? Hunt things. I'm tired of this bullshit. Um, okay. Okay. Someone. Okay. So. Um, have, it, have any of you basically tried to start a GoLang project for no reason in your work? <laughs> Just for fun. Just for fun, that's why I started this project. So that I could um, <coughs> ruin the lives of my fellow colleagues by introducing a new language into the mix. Just as you do. Um, yeah, so no one else has done that, ruin the life of the, your colleagues. Actually, it's not so bad. There's, there's some good news. And secondly, okay, so I'm hoping we're, you guys are all engineers. And uh, you, you administer maybe a website, web application. Who knows about SEO? SEO? Okay, a few of you. So this project is all about SEO. Basically, my boss said to me, our website isn't on the, um, this thing called Google. <laughs> Have you heard of it? <laughs> and uh, we need to improve our, our Google letters to whatever it's called. And then after looking at the, at the site, it's easy to understand why it doesn't get any Google up. And then this talk is about um, using Golang to improve the SEO of this, uh, of this website in question. So let's... Um, who, does everyone know what statically generated HTML is? I do. Who doesn't, maybe? Oh, God. Get out. No. <laughs> That, okay. So, um, actually, the order of my talk is probably messed up because I just did it very quickly. <laughs> uh, the important thing, right, um, what the hell is this Ransnet thing? Oh, shit. Wireless is a G. We're screwed. <laughs> We're screwed. Basically, that was, oh, no. What have I done? Help. Help. <laughs> Help. Duh. <laughs> I just want to go to that forest. I want to go to the forest. Okay, basically, I don't have internet. That's going to work just fine. Um, okay, the big reason why I have static HTML is that you can put that static HTML on S3, which can be on a CDN, and that means your website will be incredibly fast. Who doesn't... Okay, so as you may or may... I mean, who has like a Node.js or... A PHP driven application. There is one loser. Most people, <laughs> most people are losers. <laughs> Listen. Accept that you're a loser, guys. Because most people don't have the HTML and JavaScript on uh, statically on the S3 on CDN. I mean, but most people are not functional guys like you. I'm not functional. I'm the, I'm the opposite functional. of functional. I hate functional people. people. I hate the I'm, I'm the guy in the computer science department beating up the guys into scheme. I hate those lambda asshole um, people. Um, so what am I going to talk about again? Um, Fast. So it's so basically, a lot. I see what what's very popular on the web world is something called isomorphism. Does anyone know what the hell that is? No. no. One guy. There's always one guy. 
You're just putting your hand up for no reason, aren't you? <laughs> Isomorphism basically is, is basically saying that the uh, is basically saying that when when uh, a Google bot when something basically doesn't have JavaScript support, it can actually see the page for what it's supposed to be. But in in reality, that's a really sick joke and. And, and the, my, for my employers, and I'm sure for a lot of people out there who don't want to admit it, you know, they use some horrible hacks like using PhantomJS to serve a JavaScript uh, website. It's a terrible idea. Don't do it. Study HTML, guys. And then go back. Yeah. Um, is there a better way to generate static HTML other than Golang? Because Golang has some sweet features. A, that it's fast, and B, that it does this automatic contextual escaping. What's that? I don't know. I don't know what it is. I just saw it. I thought it was one other thing. If I had internet, I would have followed this link. Um, basically, um, is there something faster than Golang for generating templates? I mean, there's a whole bunch of ways to generate templates. There's like Python way, the yeah. Java way, the Ruby, the Ruby way, but I which is fastest? I mean, it's probably. I bet you my make file with M4 is probably faster than Golang, but I won't tell you that one. Forget I said. I think Golang is the fastest. I haven't done any tests. Just just the way I roll. No testing. <laughs> Bad boy. Bad boy for life. But it's really really fast. So um, what? Uh, and then automatic contextual execution. God, I hate that. I hate saying that. Is that uh, as you wait, well, no, maybe, perhaps if you build a web application, the URI has to be escaped a different way, and if the code is embedded, you know, the ampersand has to be escaped to ampersand amp depending on the context. And most people, most people screw it up. I mean, how many times have you put an ampersand in, a, in an input field and you see like it expand to something stupid? But th this does it automatically, so you don't even have to think about it very hard. This is what this is my first slide, which I sort of started with. So um, most most modern 2016 guys, 2016 yeah. Hopefully this will change. This is what my website. This is what my employer's website actually looks like. And if you go around the internet, a lot of websites look like this. Who has a website that looks like this? <laughs> they just serve a bundle.js. You're winners. You're winners. You're doing it the right way. Not. I'm a joke. You're doing it the wrong way. So basically, when uh, the Google bot uh, sees this, it basically sees a blank page. There are some people who are idiots in this world. There's many of them. My computer, like for example, my parents, they're really shit at computers. But there's also the other people who are my age who say to me that no, 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 Google bot can understand JavaScript. No, it can't. No, when it's like a five megabit byte bundle, do you think the Google bot's going to download the five megabyte bundle and start rendering your whole freaking stupid ass web application? That's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Moving on. Um, okay, so so this is what most websites look like. So let's let's make it a little bit better. And the, the, the good way to start is, is, I think, looking at the sitemap.txt. Does your website have a sitemap? Uh, every website should have a sitemap. It makes it really easy for Google, who's, who's probably lazy at this point. So a good, a good thing to do is, if my internet was working, I would click this and show you a sitemap. So basically, uh, I don't know, thoughtworks.com, the hosts of this uh, thing, um, they probably have you know, thoughtworks.com slash careers, contact us. Those are good ca ca uh, candidates to make static. So, um, so m my advice to you is just plan your, what you call it, your roots or your URLs with the sitemap.txt. Uh, and then, um, I mean, what I'm trying to say here is that you don't have to make everything uh, a static thing. And obviously, a lot of web applications with, with React.js uh, front ends are quite dynamic. You can't make the whole thing static, but you can mix and match and, and do some of it. And some of it will be, go a long way, in my opinion. There's, um, uh, uh, most websites with the React.js front end have, a, have an API back end. And to make things easier, you use this tool that, uses, <coughs> that helps you convert the, uh, the JSON <coughs> responses that you get from API into a Golang struct. Um, and 
then also don't forget to put training slashes on your on your on your paths so that you don't have to do a re expensive redirect when you're hosting on a static site. I, I include this uh, little screenshot because this tells this shows you that um, that when you're using CloudFront, you can set up uh, all sorts of behaviors. But the, the common behavior that I use at work is that if it doesn't find a static route, it just goes to 404.html, which looks like the previous slide. And that bundle that JS basically boots up uh, dynamic routes and things like that. Anyway, it works well. It really does. It works really, really well. Um, obviously, I hope you guys do this. There's some. Every, everyone knows PageSpeed Insights, don't you? Everyone. Yes. No one. Yes. I see one person nodding. There's this, also this cool to tool called Curl. Heard of it? You can just yep. put thing called Time in front of it. Yep. This HTTP ping, which is a C++ monstrosity. Um, I'm actually not using that so much. There's this new tool called HTTP stat, which is quite cool. What does that do? Uh, it tells you like, it breaks, it, like, like when you make a request, it tells you your DNS lookup was 10 milliseconds and your oh, okay. establish your TCP thing was 100 milliseconds. And uh, it tells you the whole, the whole thing, your request. And obviously, if your requests are anything, if your travel requests are more than 100 milliseconds, I'd say you have a problem. Yeah. A request should take less than 100 milliseconds. And ideally, around the world, it should be less than 100 milliseconds. So don't just test like some people do at some of my workplaces in Singapore and think, we haven't got a problem, we haven't got a problem. It's fast here, but hello, it's a shade to a, a machine in India or something like that, and you'll be surprised how crap it is. And there's a new tool called Lighthouse um, by Google, Chrome or whatever, and that also um, measures how fast your site is and all the rest of it. Yeah, so most, most of the stuff is kind of probably basic to you guys, but I'm going to show you some code anyway, just so that you can sleep well tonight thinking about my code and how boring it was. So um, you can do quite, com I mean, to, to write a static Go, um, what do you call it, generator thing, it's really quite simple, but some people screw that up and make it more complicated than it should be. I, didn't, I, I put that code in there just to show you how perhaps not to do it. But this is the better one. This is, you can just, I mean, it's like, what is this? Like 10 lines of code, and it's pretty much a, a quite a robust static generator. All you, all you need to do is replace that to the files or the paths that you, you're generating stuff. And then the structs that you feed in here are, are responses from your API. And boom, you got yourself a static website that you then put onto S3 and the rest of it. So I, w I wanted to show you that, that it's easy to like do complicated templates like, you know, have, um, I, put this, I put this on my GitHub if you want to have a look. I just find that people, for some reason, don't get going as fast as they should. Um, hopefully that's going to look okay. Like, obviously, like with any templating things, you can, you can uh, include uh, the header and the footer. And, uh, there's actually a little problem, like another thing that people get stuck by is the weird, um, no, the, the nice. weird way th things get passed around. Like for example, if I run this, if I run this, the title doesn't get filled in. So what needs to happen uh, is in my... The 404 actually is the index for the whole site. I know it doesn't really make sense when you think about it, but uh, it does when you're working with S3. So this is, this is, with this dot, for example, that's how you pass your yeah. struct into, your, into an include, so that, so that you know, the title is, is filled in and all that sort of stuff. Uh, is there anything more to say about this? It's fast. If you can find a faster way, a, more, a better way of doing this, let me know. 
But I think uh, I think Golan can't be beat. Hamel? Oh, Camel. No, it's slower, guys. It's Ruby's slow. It's small, but it's expressive. Rust. <laughs> Rust, I doubt it. I doubt it. So it's like, yeah, yeah it's, okay. it's dead simple. It's really, really simple. And uh, yeah, there's lots of things about templates people get confused about, like naming them. You don't need to name them. You can just use files. For example, <coughs> just write out uh, it, the 404.html, which is in there, gets. Yeah, yeah, it's really simple. I mean, this is it, man. This is pretty much my static side generator. It sounds really cool, doesn't it? Yeah. That, that's, that's it, pretty much. That's my talk, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, 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 there's more! Um, okay, so I use the same sort of crappy style for most things I do. Um, yeah, so if you have problems sending your struct around, you need that dot, which you hardly can see. Um, I, use, I, I, use, um, I have a blog that uses the same sort of style. I have a, an image viewer which uses the same, well, uses templates. And I also have this, this TOSC. This is quite cool. I, um, it's, it's called the table of contents. Back in the old days when people had books, right? There's like this section in the front, oh, in the front and it has like the pages of the, 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 the different chapters and things like this. So th all this thing does is go through like the headers and then builds, builds up a table of contents. So if anyone, it, how many of you have, uh, have a FAQ or something on your, on your <coughs> company website or something like this? If it doesn't have anchors, I hate you. Yeah. Every FAQ, every question in this plat and it should have a permanent so yeah, um, the the stuff was all on on my GitHub account. Please have a look. And this is the last slide where you can stare into oblivion, pretend <laughs> pretend this pain didn't happen to you. And and any questions? Um, if I had internet, I would uh, probably do some HTTP stats to show you how much faster the site is. Basically, um, the the site at my company was like. I don't know, it was like a Node.js server here in Singapore. Uh, we have actually fully transitioned. Uh, we will do very soon. But um, obviously, when it's all statified or whatever it's called, um, it's less than 100 milliseconds pretty much all around the world. It's a huge boon. It should be sub 10 milliseconds. Yeah, that'd be cool. If you're on CloudFront. Yeah, if, if there's anything better than CloudFront, please let me know. It's bullshit. Um, oh, and, and my company even has a blog, uh, i.e. that's what I do when I'm really bored and people don't bother me with the DevOps.spool.com. What's spool? Spool for guys who employ me and pay me. Oh, that's good. Well done. Okay, thanks guys. <laughs>